Good morning and welcome to the midweek devotions from Trinity United Methodist Church. My name is Lisa and I'm so glad that you have joined us, whether you're joining us live or you are joining us um, by watching the recording of our live time together. Uh, on Wednesday mornings, we sing a gospel song and we uh, walk through scripture together and we pray. So I would encourage you to have a Bible with you. Uh, today we're gonna to be in Psalm 68. We're continuing our summer uh, series in the Psalms right now. Uh, there's also a series uh, running right now through the Gospels, if that's more interesting to you, or if you'd like to do both. We're glad to get you information on both of those. Uh, so please uh, make sure to leave a comment to say hello, to say hello to one another, to comment about what we're singing or what we're praying or what we're studying, uh, to leave prayer requests, to use the thumbs up and the smiley faces as uh, little amens or to let us know that's where you're connecting. Uh, this is about as interactive as we can get right now due to the pandemic. And so please, this is an interactive time for all of us. Uh, our hymn this morning, our old school gospel song, is O oh Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. And so I encourage you to uh, sing along from where you are or to uh, uh, read the words out loud as, as we're singing. O oh Master, let me walk with thee. In lowly paths of service free, tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winding word of love. Teach me the wayward feet to stray and guide them in the homeward way. Teach me thy patience still with thee in closer, dearer company, in work that keeps faith sweet and strong, in trust that triumphs over wrong, in hope that sends a shining ray, Far down the future's broadening way, in peace that only thou canst give with thee, O Master, let me live. Amen beautiful words, beautiful lyrics, and they've been around a really long time. Uh, isn't, isn't that wonderful that we have thousands of years of people following Jesus to encourage us and inspire us and inform us in our faith? Uh, we have the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, and I'm, I'm especially glad for folks who write uh, songs and prayers uh, that uh, still feel very fresh and uh, needed for our time. Uh, good morning, Anne, and uh, good morning, Stephen. We're so glad that you are here with us. Uh, again, our scripture this morning is Psalm 68. Uh, we're going to use the first 10 verses of Psalm 68. And as we read scripture, we're using, again, another very old way of reading scripture uh, so that we can connect with the word of God for ourselves, so that we can have our, our own encounter with God. And um, that process is uh, we read a piece of scripture and 
we ask ourselves, what is capturing my attention? What is capturing my attention? Uh, the, it might be a word or phrase, right? Then we ask ourselves, how is that making a connection to my life? How is it making a connection to a question I'm asking, to an answer I'm seeking, uh, to something that's going on in the world? Um, how, how is it waking me up, right? Sometimes the scriptures wake, wake us up, draw our attention to something that uh, uh, needs correction. Uh, and so uh, that's the second, attention, correction, uh, sorry, connection, and then action. Uh, how is the scripture calling me to act? Uh, what to say, what to do, the next step to take. Uh, and then, of course, we pray. So before we begin this whole process, uh, let's take a moment to uh, settle down and um, to get quiet before God. Uh, maybe your day has already been um, kind of rushing, uh, maybe a little full already today. So let's take a moment and take a couple of breaths in. We could use a breath prayer. O oh, Master, let me walk with Thee. O oh, Master, let me walk with Thee. O oh, Master, let me walk with Thee. Psalm 68, verses 1 through 10, what captures your attention? Let God rise up. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God, but let the righteous be joyful, let them exult before God, let them be jubilant with joy, sing to God, sing praises to his name, lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds, his name is the Lord, be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, 
when you marched through the wilderness. Sila means we take a pause. We're remembering God leading the people to safety and home through the wilderness after slavery in Egypt. Oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. And so uh, go ahead and uh, write in the comments what is capturing your attention, what word or phrase is capturing your attention. having trouble seeing the comments this morning, so I'm sorry that I can't interact with you as I normally do. But feel free to interact with one another. What's capturing your attention? Where is it making connections for you? When I uh, take a look at this psalm, I see uh, four kind of parts to these first 10 verses. Um, the first two verses uh, seem to be part one, uh, that uh, the psalmist is asking that the enemies of God be scattered. And there's some really vivid images in this. Uh, as smoke is driven away, as wax melts before a fire. Um, you know, this, this kind of fading away uh, is a, a very uh, interesting choice. It's, um, it's, it's a, a peaceful choice, you know, let, it, let them just fade away, let them just melt away, God. And then the second section, uh, you know, is, is kind of started by the word but, you know, that means things are going to change. Uh, but let the righteous be joyful, you know, and then you have, you know, this idea of those that are seeking a relationship with God, to be in right relationship with God and right relationship with others. Um, God, give them joy, let them exult, let them be jubilant, jubilant, let them sing praises, let them lift up a song, uh, let them be exultant. You know, it's, it's a very, it's, um, it's more than just like happy. It's, uh, there's a liveliness to it. There's a energy and a joy uh, to being in right relationship with God and right relationship with others. You know, I think about the scripture that says, uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And joy, again, is, is very different than happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. You know, I'm, I'm happy I got the job. I'm happy my friend called me on the phone, uh, you know. Whereas joy is more rooted in relationship. And so, uh, so that's capturing my attention this morning. How, how can I exult in God today? And I think the reason that the people of God are exalting, are joyous, is because of who God is. 
And so look at verses 5 and 6. It reminds us that God is the father of orphans. And so how many of us are feeling orphaned right now? We're feeling isolated. Um, whether or not we have family or chosen family, you know, the, that, that God can be our father, uh, our mother, even when our, our parents and our family uh, disappoint us and are even destructive. You know, God, you are the father of orphans. You are the father of those who have no one. You are the one who makes it possible for us to have family and belonging. Uh, you are the protector of widows. You know, in the ancient world, uh, orphans and widows uh, had no safety net. They had no place in society. And... Uh, it was really awful. And so for God to uh, care for orphans and widows um, from God's holy habitation, God's sovereignty, God's uh, place of uh, holiness and protection and might and strength, God cares for folks who are on the margins. God cares for those who have no one to care for them. And how does that care take place? It takes place through the people of God, right? We are inspired by the Holy Spirit to care for those that no one will care for, to take them in like they were our own family. Verse 6, God gives the desolate a home to live in, right? The people of God were slaves in Egypt, and God gives them a home. You know, God, there are so many right now that are homeless. There are so many folks right now that are um, couch surfing because of the kindness of their friends. Uh, there are so many that are trying to find a safe place to live because the country that they live in is no longer safe. God, provide them a home and help us in your saving work. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. And so again, you know, we can imagine this reference to the people of God being slaves in Egypt, being imprisoned, in slavery and they are led out to prosperity, right? to a home, to a place where they can have their own vineyards, their own orchards, their own homes. God, we pray this for all people, that all people would have this opportunity for access to the resources that they need, access to jobs without the threat of harm or discrimination. God, we pray this. Access to homes without the threat of violence or abuse. Yes, God, we pray this. So let's just, let's just continue in uh, this prayer that seems to be bubbling up within us. Uh, that's a beautiful thing that the scriptures can do. It, it can draw things to our attention and uh, we use it as a threshold, as a jumping off point for prayer. And so let's just continue to pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have joy in you. Help us to praise you and exalt in you. Help us to sing a new song in a weary land. Help us to sing of your goodness and your justice and your mercy. Help our song draw people to you. Draw people to your goodness. Draw people to your blessing. Draw people to your saving love. 
draw people to your provision and help. And God, give us spiritual stamina through that singing, through that praising, through the gift of your word. Give us spiritual stamina that we may join you in your saving work, that we may join you out with the outcasts, out on the margins. We may join you in face-to-face -face providing of belonging and unconditional love and safety and purpose and understanding. We may join you in helping everyone to know that they have sacred worth and value. And God, we especially pray today for those who are suffering. I invite you to name right now persons who are suffering. They could be persons that you know. They could be persons that you've read about. They could just be big groups of people. God, we name before you those who are suffering. We name them before you. God, we name before you those who are suffering because of illness and isolation. We name before you those who are suffering because they don't have enough money. They're don't have access to unemployment. We pray if that is delayed, Lord, that, that it would come quickly. God, we pray for those who are looking for work. God, we pray for those who are suffering because of the stress. We pray for those who are suffering because they are worried and concerned for others. We pray for those who are suffering because they are essential frontline workers, for all who are grieving. We've got over 106,000 who have died because of the pandemic just here in the U.S., and there are so many all over the world, Lord. God, we pray for the essential workers, those who are picking crops and stacking shelves at stores and making deliveries. God, we pray for doctors and nurses and police officers and first responders, those who work in soup kitchens and hospice and halfway houses and shelters. We pray for the mental health workers, Lord, as we see the needs rising And God, we not only pay, pray for the pandemic of COVID, but we pray for the pandemic of racism. God, we pray for an end to racism. And we pray that those of us with privilege would be led to wise teachers that our eyes may be opened, that we may become allies, that we may listen well, that we may repent of our part in systemic racism. God, we pray for all who are enraged, all who are exhausted, and God, we pray that those who would use this time for evil, that that would just melt away like wax. It would fade away like a mist. Let evil depart and let good rise. Let justice rise. Let truth rise. 
We call on your name for we need you for this great saving work, Lord. Help us to live the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, all of us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, we close our time together by singing uh, Bind Us Together. Uh, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Not just any old peace, but the peace of Christ. God bless you, dear ones. Uh, we hope to see you back at 7 p.m. for our midweek check-in. And on Sunday, it's uh, first Sunday, so that means we have communion. And so uh, please have your bread or cracker ready. Please have your wine or grape juice ready uh, as we uh, celebrate communion as part of worship at our 9 a.m. service or our 10.30 a.m. service. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for making those prayers real in your words and actions. Uh, I hope to see you soon. <laughs>